In this awesome video about African Greys, here's my African Grey. This is Lucy, my Amazon pair, but she's unfortunately leaving the office, so I had to film this part really quick so that you could see Lucy. She's not gonna wanna leave because I'm her favorite person, but that's a whole different thing. What? I feel so betrayed, guys. I was gonna come on and tell you. Ha ha! Did you hear her laugh? Oh, I'm very upset about this. Welcome to 10 fun and randomly interesting. You want that? Okay, is that important to you? I came to my studio in the middle of the night to record this video because I am so excited. Well, this is where me and the stubborn bird are at right now. He uh, will not stay on me, so we made an adjustment for him to be in the video, right? <gasps> no kiss. It's dramatic. All right, here we go. 10 fun and randomly interesting facts about African greys. <laughs> Before I got an African Grey, somebody that I met with an African Grey told me this and it just seemed so exciting and unbelievable to me. I was not prepared for this. And by the way, this was like before, you know, the internet. Number one, how perfectly these birds can mimic the sounds of appliances. Okay, we know that they can talk. These birds can mimic our voices perfectly. But what I wasn't prepared for was how many electronic sounds these birds could mimic. It is almost as if there is a computer in their voice box. Whenever I'm looking for my phone and I say, okay, Google, five birds in my house respond as if Google is beeping. If I go turn on the oven and press the buttons, it sounds like I'm doing it in double time. If an alarm rings or if an alarm doesn't ring, but maybe an alarm supposed to ring, the bird remembers that. Saturday comes, I'm so happy to be able to sleep in. Why is my alarm ringing? I have no idea, I can't turn it off. It's not turning off. It took me a minute, but it was my bird. They're actually fascinated by and learn when things are supposed to happen and they can like remind you of your routine. And it's not just electronic sounds, okay? It's the sound of anything. One of my African greys, George, he used to learn my makeup routine. It took me a little bit to realize what he was doing until one day I went through all of my steps and next thing you know, he starts making like a spray sound. He starts going, ch -ch -ch. I'm like, what are you doing? And then I, isn't that shocking? I realized that I had forgotten the spray I was putting on my face at the time. He was there to analyze, remember, he like computed it and then would repeat it back to me. I just thought that was really fascinating, but I wasn't prepared for the level of which they can do this. That brings me to number two. Not only can they mimic computers, but they can also mimic other animals. This is very entertaining when you have a dog and maybe the bird imitates the dog barking. I could say to my bird, what does the doggy say? He'll bark, what does the cat say? He'll meow. <laughs> <laughs> but you might want to think twice about getting an African gray if you have, let's say, a cockatoo in the house or another macaw because your bird will learn how to sound like all of those animals. So you just have to be aware of that. Like whatever they hear in the house, they're going to do that noise. I have quite some stories on that. Little funny thing that happened. I had my African gray George in a carry-on and we were going to the airport and we were walking through and this bird would not stop barking. <laughs> And everyone was like, oh my God, you have a dog in there. You have a dog. This bird was enjoying barking. I mean, he was looking through the bars, seeing who he could bark at, especially kids. The kids were running over. Sure enough, when I get up to the counter, they're like, okay, what kind of dog do you have? I'm like, I don't have a dog. Ma'am, I can hear your dog bark. So if you think you're going to get through, uh, you're not because obviously the dog is barking. No, it really isn't a dog. It's a bird. Take a look. And then they take a look. It is, in fact, a bird. That's how good the bird sounded as a dog. Otherwise, by the way, the sounds or natural sounds that African greys like to make or imitate don't actually bother me at all. I've never been in a moment where I'm like, my grey is making so much noise. They're really not loud per se. So, you know, a little tidbit in case you're looking for a certain kind of bird. Number three. You have to know that these birds, they can put words in context and use their words intentionally. And if you have them, 
you know that that's 100% true. Merlin, one of the first times that he came home, one of the first words he ever said was, want some? Now he never said this word until we had food in our hand. He wanted what we were eating and he was like, want some? And we were like, oh my God, you want some? But obviously we would have offered him food because we live with our birds like family. Specifically, we knew that he wanted that. Merlin will never ask us for something randomly. He's, he's not gonna be sitting here and say want some unless I'm eating it. He knows what he's saying and he says it at the right time and he means it. They can also form sentences from words that they know and string them together to say something you may not say to them or you may not have heard them say, which is so unbelievable and amazing. It also depends on how much you communicate and talk to them. That also determines a lot of whether they're mimicking or talking to talk or talking to communicate with you. The more you communicate back with them and respond to the things that they're saying, the more they understand that what they're saying specifically elicits a certain kind of response. So I never ignore my bird. And that's why one of my birds, George, that I always talk, that's right, yeah, was so good at putting sentences together. For example, everything that I did with George, I would let him know that it's time for that activity or that thing. So I would say time for juice, time for a kiss, time for anything that he was about to get. And therefore he learned to ask me in that way. Well, one day I had him up on my shower because I don't think in my life I've ever showered without a bird. I turned off the water and George said, time, water, goodbye. Just like that in a sentence, he said, time, water, goodbye. Wow, like you know time that this is what happened. You knew water because you drink water and I say want some water and you knew goodbye from when I leave. He was trying to tell me like the water turned off, but like he was telling me in his own way and I was just mind blown. Which brings me to number four. They have this ability to talk with emotion. I mean, they will just mirror yourself back to you. Whenever I would say goodbye to my bird, he would say bye or bye. But one time he did something that I was mad at and then he was mad at me for being mad, just like this kind of like aggressive vibe. And when I left, he went bye. He knew to kind of add that tone. Now he obviously learned it from being around human beings, whether he's feeling that emotion, like I'm going to say bye dramatically, or maybe he just understands that this emotion with that emotion at this time equals that sound. I mean, they are scientists in themselves, these birds. The way they analyze our behavior is absolutely fascinating and incredible. And I think that's why I love African greys because I love to analyze them as much as they love to analyze us. And that brings me to number five. This is really funny, guys. African greys can act out an entire conversation between two people. That means they could be me and you at the same time, or you and the other side of the telephone. And what that person sounds like in the telephone, complete with the ring, the beep, the answering machine. <laughs> Whatever two-sided conversation is going on, whether it's two people in real time, they can act out the entire thing and they like to. A few of my birds will actually ring the telephone and I answer and I'm like, hello. Like I always respond to my birds. No matter what they're saying to me, I always respond. I don't act like, oh, that's just a bird talking. I never have. And I think that's what makes them so smart and so engaging. They know that they're going to get a response. So a lot of times they'll get my attention that exact way. They will call me. Why? Because when my phone rings, I answer it and I give that person attention. So why not be the phone? That's how intelligent they are. They can do scary things like that. Which brings me to number six. How do they get so good at this? Well guys, they practice alone. They may also practice not in front of you, but in front of somebody that it doesn't matter to them if they hear them practicing or not. My bird, George, I was teaching him to say my name. He had never said my name in front of me. He had spelt it, but he had never said it. Then my sister actually got a video one day when I went away. He kept saying my name. He was like, Marlene, Marlene. He was telling her, I wanna see Marlene. She was like, Marlene? And she started 
starts filming him. Like he's never said that to me. So first time he practiced it with somebody else. It was like really fascinating. I am a big fan of Dr. Irene Pepperberg. I love her model rival technique. And that is when you teach how to do something by being the model and the rival. <laughs> It's pretty impressive how African greys can really learn so fast and engage with you. They love to surprise their person or their teacher or their kind of like partner with what it is that they learn. They do love reactions and I think that excites them as much as it excites you seeing them. If you have a bird, you probably have experienced this. Birds may have favorite TV shows or TV characters. You guys know that my macaw Rocky, he loves to watch his television at night and he loves certain shows and there has to be music in it. Pretty women, like reality shows, yeah. But he really does care about what he watches. Now from you guys, I've learned how much your birds like certain birds that appear on our show, which is so cool to know. Or how many of you tell me that the bird loves the theme song that we have coming on in the beginning of the video. One time there was this television show that I was watching on my laptop. I had flown home with my bird at night. It was just like him and me. So I would have him sit with me and I would watch this show on my laptop. Every time this one guy appeared on screen, my bird would be like, Whoa! Wow, like you recognize that specific character and you're excited about that specific character. Which brings me to number eight. These birds recognize themselves in mirrors. African greys time and time and again have shown that they're very interested in themselves as being in the mirror and understand that it's themselves. I think Irene Pepperberg had this one situation where her bird looked in the mirror. He knew all sorts of colors, all the primary colors, all the colors of the rainbow that you always talk about. But the first time he saw himself in the mirror, he said, what color? Like he recognized himself, said that he was him and then asked, what color. I have a video of my African Grey George seeing himself in the video camera for the first time back when like iPhones first had selfie mode. So I showed it to him and I said, who's that in the video? And he like looks at the video and then he taps it and he goes, hey. All right. He's trying to see if he gets a response. And then he says, <coughs> then he comes to this conclusion where he says, I'm George. George. And you can see that he absolutely realizes himself in the camera. Uh, he was just such an amazing bird. Those kind of experiences living with an African gray are so incredible. You're like in shock. And that's what's so fascinating about them. It's not just about the mirror. It's really about their thought process and how deep they're able to think and know what's going on and communicate it. Not to say that other birds may not know that that's themselves in the mirror, but just the way they've communicated about it documented is pretty interesting. Which brings me to number nine. Wow, they have a sense of humor. They can make up tricks, make up games, and make up their own jokes. I had a friend come over and she was just like terrified of birds. She was like, uh, I didn't know you had these animals here, so I'm just gonna. And so she was just so terrified. And so she was in my living room and I was like, just stay here. I'm just gonna go get like uh, my jacket since we're going out, my purse, whatever, I'll be right out. When I came out, she's standing there. She's like, I didn't, I didn't do anything. And I'm like, what happened? And she's like, well, I was just standing here and then your bird said what are you doing and I literally believe the bird was just trying to scare her because he would put on this creepy voice and he was like what are you doing I think they definitely have their own sense of humor they know how to make up tricks make up games and make up their own jokes usually if they make up a game you're going to be the brunt of their joke you're going to be the one that the joke is on if they say something dirty or mean, if they're like, shut up, and you laugh, they're gonna understand that that can elicit that kind of response and they will learn the timing to do those things, <laughs> which is really funny. And this brings me to number 10, my absolute favorite thing. My ultimate favorite thing about African Greys, though it does make them seem a little bit crazy. My African gray George and my mustache parakeet Picasso absolutely loved each other. Sometimes I would hear the sound of them fighting. 
and I would hear Picasso screaming, like, like screaming, and I would run in, and they couldn't have been farther apart. I would realize that George is making it sound like there's an emergency so that I would run in and he could see my face. Like all this drama so that he could see me. But the funny thing is like this bird would create these fake dramas all to get my attention. They are masters at creating the sound to elicit the response they want, which is why they learn how to speak so well. It's endless if you have an African gray what you can teach them, but it's also endless what they're able to teach themselves, which makes them an amazing, very entertaining bird to have. They do need to be free. They shouldn't be in cages and um, they can do a lot of damage to your home and they can do a lot of things that you may not be prepared for. If you'd like a video on that, let me know. I will prep you in that way. Let me know in the comments what your birds do that you're absolutely fascinated by. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. I will see you guys soon.